The African American community disappeared from Flytown, Columbus over a period of time, forcing them to move away from family and friends, costing them potential financial and political opportunities as well. In this short film, I will show how African Americans were hit hard by the effects of urban renewal. So, what is urban renewal? Urban renewal is the process where an urban neighborhood is improved or redeveloped. This process demolishes old and run-down buildings and replaces them with new and up-to-date housing or stadiums. But what about a common and well-known example of urban renewal? Let us look at the history of Dodger Stadium. Before Chavez Ravine was home to Dodger Stadium, it was home to a thriving group of Mexican Americans. It also contained a hospital that was dedicated to treating an epidemic of smallpox, especially in African Americans and Mexican Americans. It had a grocery, even a kindergarten. Eventually, the neighborhood was torn down to, in the name of the supposed public good and Dodger Stadium was built in its place. That is an important thing to keep in mind in terms of urban renewal, that while some of us, such as white people, might think that it was a good thing, we must keep in mind that for many African Americans, urban renewal devastated them, which I will talk more about in this video. Let us go over the history of this particular neighborhood in order. Post-1865, Flytown is born as a manufacturing area. It was lived in not just by African Americans, many of whom fled the Ku Klux Klan from the South, settling in the neighborhood and becoming a considerably wide population, but also by Irish and Italian immigrants who also lived there. Eventually, the, um, the neighborhood grew to contain public baths, sims, and the kindergarten. However, with time, housing values fell by 41%. Families doubling up in homes became a common occurrence, and a census in 1950 shows that only 25% of Flytown houses had running water, and the neighborhood became known as the poorest housing district in Columbus. By 1953, it was declared a blighted area by the Columbus Redevelopment Authority. And in 1953, Flytown was demolished for urban renewal. By 1965, plans of a highway, I-160 construction, began to go underway. In 1975, a retirement home was also built on the land. A highway design was approved in 1971, and the first of I-160 opened in 1993. According to Mindy Foylove, the long-term consequences for African Americans were severe. Many did not recover financially from being forced to move. It also harmed chances of African Americans in terms of owning their own business. Instead of working to make their business thrive, they were forced to put money into moving. Due to forced relocation, African Americans became less likely to participate in politics due to having to acclimate to a new city. Forced relocation due to urban renewal also saw a rise in drug use, as well as crime. African Americans forced to move became more withdrawn in courting to fully love, only helping family members and friends, and no longer reaching out to neighbors. Due to Sim Crow laws, according to Julie fully love, African Americans did not have any places to go except for the places that white realtors were not willing to rent to them. As a result, they were all forced into the same overcrowded neighborhood. Urban renewal also did harm to the health of displaced African Americans after they would settle into their new homes, causing stress, triggering physical health problems as well as mental ones. African Americans also got sick often due to the poor living conditions. Most families forced to move lost touch with their friends. Some places did not even see new housing be put up for them to live like promised, but instead saw their land be put to use for other things than what was promised, such as the Coke bottle plant. African Americans were also dealt a blow in terms of finances. Many could not afford the only homes they were allowed to buy. By 1962, 
it is believed that 80% of those affected by urban renewal were African American. In 2005, Flytown community members were reunited. One former community member talked about the sense of love and community, and how Flytown was like a big family, and how those who lived there would be in and out of each other's homes. Another woman cited how they could all trust each other and left their doors open at night. A third person says they wish they still lived there, but they do not know anyone in their current place of residence. The research I have done about African Americans clearly shows the negative physical, financial, and social aspects that played a role in their lives as a result of forced relocation. Flytown citizens were left without a sense of home and community. Their chances for success in business, as well as politics, went down, and many who suffered from the consequences of urban renewal turned to drugs and crime, as well as struggled with health problems. Now that we all know the terrible things that were done nationally and in this one neighborhood, thanks to urban renewal, we can all take action to improve the lives of those still suffering from long-term effects around us.